Well, it looks like meat, supposedly tastes like meat, and it's technically meat, but from cells. The USDA has approved lab-grown meat for sale in the United States. Two companies are already cooking it. It will likely take a couple years to hit store shelves, but in the meantime, to help us understand how this can even happen, we are joined by Brian Dickinson, chemistry professor at the University of Chicago. Professor Dickinson, thank you so much for being here. It's great to be here. Can you first break down the process of what seems like magic in like a Frankenstein way, uh, going from a cell to a chunk of meat? Yeah, so scientists have been growing animal cells in the laboratory for over 100 years now. And it's a process that we refer to as cell culture. Um, so we take cells and grow them under very controlled conditions in the laboratory. And after 100 years, it's a really routine part of biomedical research. And a lab like mine will have possibly 12 or more different types of cells growing at any given time in the laboratory. And we use those to do experiments and ask biological questions, test new drugs and things like that. So the underlying technology here is very established and very routine. What's really new is just this effort to try to scale up that process and grow cells, not at the very small amounts that we need to run experiments on, but grow them up at a level to actually produce a product for human consumption. Um, so even in the lab, when we grow them at small scales, it's a very expensive process because the ingredients that it takes to keep them alive and the conditions that we need to grow them under are very controlled. They need to be very sterile. Um, so really the effort now is to try to make that all uh, both cheaper and more sustainable to be able mm -hmm. to grow the levels that we would need to actually create kind of a meat product. Yeah, to scale it, if you will. So is this uh, nutrition of lab-grown meat any different than from an animal? I'm sure it would be. Is it better health-wise? What's good, what's bad? Well, the first thing you need to keep in mind is that the cells are exactly the same. So genetically, there's no difference. So to a first approximation, I wouldn't expect any nutritional difference. But I think just like the way an animal is grown and what you feed it could have impacts on the kind of health content of the meat product that's produced, the way the cells are grown would also have probably some marginal differences in kind of the overall nutritional value. But you know, my opinion is it's going to be really about the costs and the sustainability of the final product that's really gonna dictate whether this becomes a sustainable food source. Most people eat meat primarily for protein and the protein content is for sure going to be uh, not, not changed. Yeah, quick hits here. Um, is this actually more environmentally friendly compared to factory farming? I mean, one would presume that it is, right? Because, you know, creating meat takes plants, taking plants, da, 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 the regrowth process and gives more CO2. This is better for the environment argument, uh, arguably? I mean, in the future, that's the hope. I would say right now it's pretty unclear and it's, you know, ultimately the ingredients it takes to sustain the cells have their own environmental footprint. So I think in the, you know, on paper, this could be a game changer for the environment because if we can actually use sunlight to grow meat eventually, that's what we ultimately need. At the moment, it's a little bit nebulous whether this actually is, you know, has a smaller carbon footprint. But, you know, at the time being, this is going to be expensive and perhaps, right. you know, not more environmentally sustainable, but it's really, the research and development will hopefully lead, lead to a future where this is uh, both of those things. Mm -hmm. Quick hits here. Could this help fight hunger in the world? Presumably if it can be scaled, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we, as the world develops, there's a, a growing appetite for meat products. So we need to find new ways to create them in a way that is sustainable. So like I said, we don't know what the future holds, but I think if this can be, you know, more science can happen and more development, there's a lot of potential for this to really make an impact, but uh, time will tell. Could vegans eat this? Uh, it might be animal at the cellular level, but it doesn't have a soul. It's not meat per se. Is that more? I of a mean, hopefully it gets. Deal? I mean, I, that's my hope. It gets people during their dinner time having these conversations, right? Where does our food come from? What does it mean to be an animal on this planet, eating other, you know? living things on this planet, which we need to do to stay alive. I mean, these are really philosophically interesting questions. To me, I think these are cells grown in a dish um, or in a vat, right? They're, they're not animals. Um, but yeah, I think these are the conversations that hopefully people have and think a little bit deeper about both the food that they're eating and also the science and the science that can hopefully impact the way we, we kind of interact with our planet. 
So lab grown meat ethics 101 uh, will be in the syllabus soon at the University of Chicago, potentially. Um, that's a joke here on this stream. We don't have many of them. But uh, so, so the arc of what's healthy, uh, Professor, is sometimes takes years to get right. Like the government said, you know, asbestos was okay, lead was okay in paint, you know, fake sweeteners were fine. Uh, just because the government says it's safe doesn't mean it will be 50 years from now. Um, but you've obviously made a career of this. Your standards say this is going to be safe and healthy. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this this the the process of growing cells in the lab is is over a century old. So that mm -hmm. that's a well developed technology. Um, the health aspects of it, I think, are not. Um, that's not really the interesting question. It really is: can it be, you know, uh, uh, made sustainable? Can the cost be driven down? Right. Things of that nature. I mean, I would say with food science, you know, the the health understanding of foods, people like to try to rank order health, you know, metrics of different food products. Like I said, most people eat meat for protein. This is going to be in principle, a great protein source because mm -hmm. cells are full of protein and that's going to be unchanged. Um, and in fact, you know, from a sterility standpoint, you have to grow cells under very sterile conditions. So things like food poisoning wouldn't really be an issue with this sort of product. And that's, hmm. you know, one concern, especially with things like chicken. So, um, but like I said, you know, time will tell. And, and I guess in the lab, you do have have a lot of control over how things are grown. So I think one hope for food science and biotechnology is to try to make foods healthier. In fact, right. that's not really the goal here, but certainly there are efforts in other types of foods to try to add in additional health benefits in a sustainable way to help feed the world as well. All right, Professor Brian Dickinson, thanks for getting in the office. Uh, chemistry professor at the lauded University of Chicago. We appreciate your time here on the stream. Happy to be here.